pointing out a bunch of stuff. Um, what I'm gonna... The real big blueberries are over top the other side of the hill. I didn't think they would be, but uh, you want to see some big ones, I'll show you a patch or two that uh, we picked a lot of them out yesterday, though they're <laughs> awful good. Um, this, this hike is, but uh, I'm much too eclectic for that. I'll be telling you things about fern and rocks and little bugs and plants and oak trees and just about everything that I can see as I come along, trying to give you that real quick introduction to what kinds of things you can see. Now, I could spend the next hour just on two meters of that little creek, finding things and looking at things and that kind of thing, just because I'm interested in whatever that's there. But we're going to go walk along. The hill's been flagged with blue flagging tape. Most of the time you'll be able to go from a piece of flagging tape and see the next piece of flagging tape and you should be able to look back and see the next piece of flagging tape. That doesn't work all the time, so you may have to listen. If you did get separated from, uh, from the group and uh, you holler, we'll come and get you or just walk downhill. If you walk downhill, you're going to come to the Kingsway, the Second Avenue, to Bancroft Drive, you know, then flag a cab and go home. That kind of thing. You won't get lost though. It's a fairly well traveled trail, though it's it's still a, a pristine trail. It's not it's not been uh, been mucked out or anything like that. So I, I, I'm sure we'll we'll go fairly slow at the beginning to sort of get people up the hill, and then we'll move along a little faster. We'll be about an hour and 15 minutes. That's what I told everybody yesterday, but we got out in about an hour and 25 minutes. So we just got interested in something, and people asked questions, and we stopped and talked about it, and so we just didn't go along as fast as we were, were planning. I'll try to answer any question you can come up with. Um, I, I'd love it if you'd interrupt with questions or you don't have to put, just sing them out and if people are interested in them, we'll stop and talk about them and if not, we won't, okay? Um, and so let's uh, start remembering that I'm not gonna key in on blueberries all the time. I'm gonna do just as much as I can that little bit of time. Let's go. We're already sort of away from the city and in a little gully that has a um, little deeper soil because it's been running off the rocks and into this, this little gully and we've got some reasonably mature trees and some shrubs, um, some blueberries. And but we're running into something that's kind of interesting right to begin with, and that's two different kinds of ferns living side by side. Now you may want to scooch around so you can see the two different kinds of ferns right here and right here. I do know the names of these. This is interrupted fern. Interrupted fern is interesting because it has interruptions in it. You can tell the interruptions. It looks like something's gone wrong with the leaf, but that's not true. That's its spores. That's where it makes its seeds or its spores. And so that's where the seeds are coming off of the spores. Okay? They all come out from a single section. I could grab the whole plant here and yank it. I'm not going to. And um, they're all a single stalk. Looking very much alike, uh, the same is this kind of fern, which has none of the interruptions and comes up and has three, th three branches. This is called bracken fern. A bracken fern is that fern that in the fall, the first time it frosts, it turns this color. And it's a real good indicator of, did, was there frost in this little gully last night or not? Because it's the thing that is really frost, uh, it'll, just, it'll just go that way. In the spring, um, ferns come out as fiddleheads, or small little completely violin shaped little things that unroll to make the, the frond, and that's what these are called. Um, people eat fiddleheads. What kind would you eat? Well, you would eat the interrupted fern, not the bracken fern, because from some reading that I did a few years ago, bracken fern is not good for us to eat. It, it does contain a carcinogen, and it's, it's really not good for you. Uh, but you've got to remember, this is the, so it would be easy to tell, okay? You just come along and you go for the fiddleheads, of this, but these haven't grown yet. So how do you know? So you know by looking at last year's stock, and you just pick around with last year's stock, and you can tell that this is interrupted fern from last year. It's there, 
and you play around down here, yeah. and you come up with a chunk of uh, bracket. And you, can, you can just tell that it's like well, couldn't grab it right there, but I mean I would. Um, and so you'd use the um, uh, the interrupted for question. Let's move along. Bye guys. I've never had Whoa, whoa. Okay, I'll step over to scare me too. Okay. This is one of the uh, very interesting parts of uh, the Sudbury area. Lots of this kind of green type moss. Now, when we were kids, we used it for all kinds of things, for throwing at people. And I mean, that's a great moss. Its, it's technical name is Polia. P O H L I A. Polia. And um, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a moss that is very interesting because it has a really interesting way of putting out its spores or its seeds. Um, if you take a look at the polia that's around here, the green mat isn't quite as healthy as it could be right now. It's a little farther into the summer, but the flowering part or the seed part is sticking out like crazy. Now, if you picked one of these and took a look at it, you'd see that it's a little hanging capsule. And so it would look something like this. This is the stem and this is the hanging capsule like this. Okay. This is so interesting because if polia put out all its spores on one day or in a couple of days and it wasn't a good, good time of year or the weather was inappropriate or something like that, then it would lose a year's, a year's um, seeds or a year's spores. And so what happens is um, this capsule has millions of spores inside and the outside end of the capsule has, has um, sort of like teeth on it, sort of like shark's teeth. You know, a shark's teeth sort of grow from the inside and out and they're, and they're discarded. And these teeth are sort of pointing into the capsule, holding in. And as the teeth go in, they pick up a small load of spores. And then when they go out, they allow the spores to go, and this is closed off, and then come in and get some more, like this, on appropriate days. Now, how do they know? Well, these teeth are hydroscopic. Hydroscopic means that they can pick water out of the air, just like um, <laughs> your trident gum in your pocket in May. You know how gum sometimes gets sort of wet in your pocket? It's hydroscopic. It'll pick water out of the air. You know the little packets of stuff that come with some electronic gear that you don't know what it's for? Well, that's hydroscopic. It pulls water out of that package, and the water goes into there rather than into your electronic gear. And so these are hydroscopic. When it's wet, dewy, or rainy, they swell and go in like this and protect the little capsule. When it dries out so that the spores will float around, land someplace, and take root, they dry out, they let out that day's load of uh, stuff. If it gets dewy later on in the night or it starts to rain, protect everything. It might be three days of rainy, wet, dewy, humid, really humid weather, that kind of thing. They'll just stay in there, no problem. And then when it's nice again, like today, let's let them go. All those little brown things are doing that. <laughs> that amazes me. I don't know. I guess I'm easily impressed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> put them under a microscope to figure that out. Yeah, uh, actually, <laughs> some researcher did. I just read his report. That's kind of an interesting, kind of an interesting way. There's other kinds of moss too that do the same thing, and I'll show you something called ground pine later on on the cool side of the hill um, that does the same kind of thing, and its little capsules are larger, and you'll be able to see it a little bit better. So come along, let's climb. Grab your going. And if you turn that over and jam it in, you just have to drop it. Pretty good example of the type of um, property that blueberries like a lot. If you look around, you can see sort of rocky, southern facing um, um, areas, uh, sort of sandy, gravelly soil, uh, the kind of soil that white pine would like. Now, this area used to be covered with white pine, and if you look at your feet, you'll see some little white pines that are starting to grow. They were planted there. And they're, they're starting to take things over again. Yeah, sorry, somebody crushing one? Oh. And, uh, and so this is good blueberry, this is good blueberry property. Sudbury has the, um, the distinction of being the blueberry capital of Ontario. Yeah, yes or no, I don't know. But it is 
definitely a bushfire capital. We get lots of bushfires here in this neighborhood. And we also get lots of sunshine. And so with the sun and the water and the soil, the soil has kind of um, been changed a little bit by the amount of bushfires that we have around here. They like to be in sort of open areas with a little bit of shade of a tree and if a bushfire goes through and takes away all that that uh, underbrush then it opens up the sun for the um, for the blueberries and and, um, and they'll they'll grow like crazy. Um, blueberries are fertilized in the spring mostly by black flies. Now not all altogether by black flies because there's certainly lots of other insects that, that that fertilize them as well but if you like blueberries you also like black flies so uh, yeah 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 you, you have no have choice to, you, don't, you don't have to but yeah. <laughs> you, you want them wrong right? yeah you you yeah. need them as, as a uh, part of things um, as we walk along through the next little area you're going to notice a bunch of little brown moths I can, I'm pointing them especially up in this area they're just dancing on the rocks these are um, forest tent caterpillar um, moths the forest tent caterpillars have now uh, you know metamorphosed there's one right there and he's gonna, or he or she are gonna lay some eggs for next year so we'll have more forest tent caterpillars a little farther up I'm going to show you a, um, uh, a little bit of a puzzle there's blueberries that are just like this but they have no leaves on on, on their little trees uh, on their little shrubs so um, maybe you can think about it on your way up why there would be blueberries with blueberries on them blueberry plants absolutely no leaves what must have happened and that kind of thing uh, uh, to have that happen on the way take a look at the uh, the, uh, the forest tent caterpillars that are fluttering around and uh, we'll go a little farther North, McCray Island and Swiss and Potter Island, Wrenching University, uh, sand down through that little section there. As far as you can see down that bay is Brunhelic Bay. It's down right at the um, uh, <coughs> Conservation Authority. Yeah, right down at the end of the Conservation Woo! Authority. Just tucked in behind Galliard Island, you can see um, um, a flag right on the far shore that's a guy's cottage and right in front is Galliard Island down farther Ida, Swansea Island and all the way down to Moonlight Beach keep going Coniston, Coniston stacks and then we can't see anything that way but we will go that way and we can see the vista all the way to Falcon Ridge and we'll be going up up there this is one of the reasons why we like to keep these hilltops for people wouldn't it be nice to have a house here yeah, right. yeah. But what's going to happen is that the people that want to come up and enjoy this kind of a property, now we're only 300 meters from Bancroft Drive, and we're having this kind of a, you know, pretty good experience right here in our city. Right here, you know. This is the Brady. Yes, why? Pick it up. 
vegetation eaters, just like they are in your house. They just eat, or they just eat flour and whatever that's, that's in your house. They like this. There's a baby one. Look at that. Look at how cute he is. Oh. Baby <laughs> Yeah. And 7,000 brothers, yeah. <laughs> Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to walk maybe uh, 300 feet up past where that person over there is having a spider. Doing some picking up ahead, so we're gonna just go on and walk that way. There's a grasshopper. I want to know are these ones? <laughs> yeah. I guess if you wanted to kill me, you could find me here usually sometimes. Uh, just uh, <laughs> You know, I, I like coming to this spot, and I'll, I'll show you my rock puzzle, and um, and then maybe you'll uh, go out and find one in your backyard someplace and, uh, and play with it too. You'll have to come down here to a little oak tree and kind of stand around where I can show it to you. We've got a, an oak tree that's been uh, so severely stressed by the, the forest tent caterpillar over the last three or four years that it really has no leaves left, and now that the tent caterpillars aren't really bad on them, the gypsy moth are, are getting them. And uh, there's just so much stress on these oaks that um, uh, a lot of them are not going to make it. Why don't you come in a little bit farther because this is what I'm going to key in on. So sort of stand where you can kind of see that. Hey, if you're at the front, can you guys bend down? And because uh, I don't think I've very often had so many people around this. Yesterday I had a dozen. This is um, my, my rock puzzle. And this, all these rocks that are here were fallen down here when I first came upon them and all these rocks that are here are still looking for a place on this rock because this rock was bigger and it keeps chipping off it keeps getting smaller because water will get behind and pop off a rock An acorn. and it'll continue acorn. 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 Oh, let me get you please to hold my little pieces that one that one now, everybody saw that it did come, it was all together at the beginning, nobody stole a piece or anything. Okay, and then this one comes out. And then this one, this one is yours to hold for a minute. And this one comes out. And this one comes out. <laughs> and this one comes out. And that's how I found it. And these things migrate south, they go down. And so I picked these up and I said, hey, I think that one will fit in there. Mm -hmm. And it did. And it snicks together so nicely. Just when you get it, you know you've got it. Does that one come apart? And this one has to be a little bit there. Mm -hmm. Look what I, I found it. I love doing card. this. And this one goes in here. Oh, I found an acorn. One. Yeah. It did. Mama, Oops. Like I think I need. It's down here. Oops. Uh oh. Uh oh. What's wrong? This this could take a little longer, folks. <laughs> Thank you. This is the piece that a lady found for me yesterday over there. This piece I never had, and we tried to get the other pieces in. And she says, "Well, try this one." And she just went plunk like that. <laughs> <laughs> I looked for it for a long time. <laughs> this goes in here somehow. What's that sound? The sound you hear is a cicada. The cicada is a bug that's 17 years old. Laying in an egg in the ground, 
stays in the ground as a big old grub and after 17 years of development metamorphoses and becomes an adult, mates, lays eggs and dies. And that's the mating sound. They're also called dog day harvest flies. They're very, very shy. You couldn't get close to them unless you were very, very lucky. And my daughter Amy and I were in the bush a couple of years ago and one started to sing right beside us. She said, I thought it, still thought it was far away or we'd never find it. And she says, it's right there. Mm -hmm. And we, we took that branch, broke the branch off and came running down the hill with it to show everybody that we could because it's very hard to see them. And then we took it back and then laid it there and let him go off. Figured a 17 year old, uh, you know, <laughs> don't want to mess with them too much. And so it's a, either a dog day harvest fly that makes that sound or a cicada all the same family. And there, we're almost all back. That's your rock puzzle? That's my rock puzzle. That's, That's the same as me. Is that going to part there? It might someday because it looks mm -hmm. like there's water getting in there. It can all come apart again. This piece? Yeah. This piece is right here. I just haven't had time to excavate it or oh, to get I it out. And then there's a bunch of here that I keep going. I wonder where that comes from. You know, it's a different colors. So you, you can tell which one's been exposed to the weather longer, that kind of thing. And I have no idea why this one fits here. And like it, it doesn't look like it belongs. I have no idea why it's like it. So that's rock puzzles. As we walk along, we'll find places that are what I would call rock puzzle heaven. Start putting them back. If you walk along, you'll see something that you can tell fits. Just reach down and put it in. It'll sneak together so nice. And uh, you'll, you'll enjoy putting things together. I have a bunch in my, in my box that I can carry in. And I can put five or six of them together in one little rock. And then you get fear about things. You won't take it and whack it with a hammer and make the rock puzzles or pry them apart. You have to actually fit that way. Answer these. High Ridge. Uh, I'll go along. I'll go ahead of you a little bit, if I may, because uh, uh, last year there was a hornet's nest up in that neighborhood, and I just go up to make sure that uh, that there aren't any around. There weren't any at all yesterday. I checked it out. And, um, Okay, so I'll just go ahead and you just follow along. And the next time we stop, we'll be right on the top of a fairly high point. Watch. Slightly different perspective of the city where you can see New Sudbury. That's the uh, Herbie's Corner, standard auto glass. The Kingsway runs in from where those cars go, up following my finger that way, and in through that. You can sort of tell the two ridges just by the slightly different greens, and runs all the way in, into the city. This roadway that we see in here is the roadway that underneath it has a seven foot pipe that brings water from Wanapate River, or I'm sorry, Wanapate Lake, to the, uh, to the pumping station on the shores of Lake Ramsey pumped up into uh, uh, to the, uh, to the water towers. That pipe goes down through there, past that set of buildings, and up past the water tower. Now, as it goes by, some of the water is siphoned or pushed up into there for storage so that they don't have to pump it when they need it. They can actually let it just drain out of their gravity feed. That's a fairly high spot in the city, and uh, I guess that's high enough to, to push water all through the pipe. Going this way, we can see 2nd Avenue and that new um, cemetery. Um, the other Sudbury water tower, there's the one on Falcon Bridge Road. Far out, Garson. Um, and over there, um, by that tower, the old radar base. way through the hike. If you would like, you can go back following the same kind of way and you're back in about the same kind of distance. If you want to continue, we're going to go over this edge and down that edge down there, around through that little gully, and then back. So you see it's slightly longer, but we're going to stop fewer times. So it'll take about the same amount of time to get back one way or the other, just whichever you'd prefer to do. 
This is now the north side of the hill. You're going to see that there's very different plants and stuff like that on this side of the hill. You'll see more lichen. Uh, you'll see more mosses. Uh, the rocks will be a little bit more bare. But the blueberries that you'll see are growing in slightly cooler environment. They're not, they, they weren't out um, a couple of weeks ago. They're later than usual, but they're bigger. And uh, because it's farther away, they haven't been picked over as much and that kind of thing. So maybe I can entice you to come along. That's the one I want. <laughs> now, this is the part of the hill that could be dangerous because the rocks have been um, weathered. They're, they're, rock part is not slippery no. but something that you step on could be slippery so please don't lean forward and walk down the hill lean back if anything's going to happen you want to go down on one hand or down on your butt where you're stuck not where you start to roll so please um uh, please take it careful and don't step on the lichen and the mosses if you can because they're real slippery so try to stay on good black rock good old My knees, my knees are so the reindeer moss, that's the, uh, the gray kind of lichen and the green stuff that's right below it is something different and then again lots of polia. And then if you look on the rocks you can see this kind of green stuff and this kind of gray. Two different kinds of, uh, of, of lichen. Lichen and mosses grow so, 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 so slowly that one the size of a loony could be about 40 years old. Um, so these, these big uh, bunches of lichens that you see are, are very old and as they slough off and roll down the hill they make more soil and uh, they run into gullies. The polio then makes even more soil and runs down into our gullies and that's how, how, we get our, how we get our dirt. Do you have any fossils in the rocks? Or? Not in these rocks. This is not sedimentary rock. It's a uh, metamorphic rock which is, uh, was made, this rock came as a, as, um, it's a volcanic rock, not rock that was laid down underneath uh, an ocean. So it's two different kinds. On Manitoulin, then you've got what you've got. Of them, the ground pine are kind of related. It's called ground pine because it looks sort of like a pine tree when you peck it one at a time. But it's in it's in seed two or capsule. And if you spot them, you can see them now. They're not quite ready to to go yet. But they still got their little cap on the end, like a like an acorn. And if you take it and you just pick that little cap off, pick it off. There's a bunch of of green um, sort of dust in there. Millions and millions of tiny, tiny airborne spores. And uh, that's how they go from place to place. And there's, there's plenty of them along here. Uh, a lot of people have heard about Labrador tea. Uh, we have a, we're in a patch of Labrador tea right here. Uh, Labrador tea, if you come take a look at it, has rounded leaves. They roll over. The leaves roll over and they're, and they're, they're furry on the bottom. This fur will turn to, to orange in the, uh, in the fall. And if you pick a few handfuls of that, you can make a really nice tea out of that. Just take it and dry it, crush it, boil it, add some shirt milk, and you've got, you've got Labrador tea, which is what the uh, native people and people in the north years ago used to use. We're walking through a big patch of Labrador tea, and you may want to take a little bit with you. And, um, and then we're going up and over Rock Puzzle Heaven. Those are coming up, and uh, we'll go up over Rock Puzzle Heaven. <laughs> I should get in here and start eating these. The one this blueberry hike for was to find the good patch. Right. Forget about me. Who wants to know about this polio? Wow, look at that. Yeah. Oh, that's a good one. 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 Yeah. O
Blueberry time. Come on in and have some fun. Don't cramp on them. Fun? Yay! Everybody, oh, hop yeah. in. Yeah. Oh, we can play ball with those berries. Oh, yeah, yeah. Go through your hole. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, no. One berry a pie. Uh, what's that Latin name again for them? Bassinium oh. and Gustafolium. Low bush. Low bush, sweet low bush blueberry. Look at the one I. Wow, would you like me to weigh that for you? What? Okay. Oh. Is this a good patch or what? This is not lion? Mm -hmm. Down there. Wow. Down there. Uh -huh. It's called a dead lion. It lives in a little V-shaped depression in the soil. That's how it bites. Uh, and, it, and that's how it bites with these two pinchers oh. up front. But it did roll a bite. And it bite me. Gotta go. <laughs> See they, they're pretty quick. Could get wet? Oh. Yeah, I just walk on the way. Hey, It'll be okay. What is this stuff here? Uh, this fern has an interruption on it. It came from over there, so it's an interrupted fern. Um, the three, the, st the stock with the three is a bracken fern. And this is the new one. As you go by, take a look at it. It's got much, much, much more delicate leaves. It's called royal fern. It's a little smaller, has no interruptions, and, um, and, uh, and doesn't split off. And it's very, very... Very, very serrated, and so it's, it's called a royal fur. Which one? On the trail market. And he'll, he'll come out as a butter, as a moth. This tree is just full of them. Yeah, this tree is just full of them. Look at the moth. When they come out, the uh, gypsy moths. When they come out, the gypsy moths will be. Um, uh, the females are very big and very heavy. And they and they, they put their eggs in clumps on trees in little clumps that, and the the eggs look like caviar and there's all kinds of fur in and around them little fur and the uh, the mother actually pulls fluff or fur from her abdomen and jams it in around her eggs so that her eggs are, are more protected for the winter they are so big these the, the gypsy moth females that they cannot fly just the males are able to fly this, these moths are so big they they uh, they have to walk. That was snooze, eh? Yeah. The next little area goes over lots of tumbled down rocks. If you see leftover pine cones or acorns or something like that sitting on them, it's from the chipmunks and the squirrels that like to sit up on the top of something okay. and eat and, and drop it. It's, it's a little dangerous walking. These rocks tend to roll a bit, so take your time and, and be real careful in along here that you're just going along um, this, this little rock face. If you see blue poop on a on a on a rock or someplace, it comes from the birds. They uh, they keep uh, blueberries. They eat blueberries a lot. Robins are in here eating them, and the gulls and the crows and everything. Partridges. Uh, and uh, that's how blueberries blueberries usually uh, when a blueberry falls off and is going to go and make a new blueberry plant, it rolls downhill. But how do they get back up to the top afterwards? Well, in the digestive tract of birds. Uh, if it stays in the digestive tract of a bird for about 20 minutes, it certainly doesn't hurt the seed. And uh, so blue uh, plants, and every single leaf has been removed. By the gypsy moth. By the gypsy moth. Scary, isn't it? Yeah, all the blueberry bushes completely stripped by the gypsy moth. This little area here was a little cabin that a guy had. Uh, Bancroft Drive had a, a little store along where the um, where the playground uh, shack is. Came in behind there. The driveway was cut out right from there. Came in here, 
this is his little uh, his little shack. Calvin, right here. Boot. Yeah, he left his boot, a teacup, <laughs> and uh, some other stuff. <laughs> Even put it in the fire, was it? One more thing before you go, right ahead of Janet is something called stinging nettle. Oh, okay. It's um, it's something you're not gonna, gonna want to want to walk into. So if you're shorts or you got bare feet in your sneakers, just sort of watch where you walk, and um, I'll point out the, I'll, I'll point them out as you go by, and uh, they're sort of three leafed and there's little pickies on them, and so if you hit them, you'll get a little bit of a rash. So I'll just I'll just show you where they are. Here, there's three of these from there and there and there. That's stinging nettle. Yes. That is. Uh, okay, and that. There, there. That's the test I'm getting out is passing the stinging nettle. <laughs> <laughs> you, you deserve them for carrying it. <laughs> Thank you, that was really good. Okay, you're very, very welcome. I'm glad you enjoyed Blueberry Hill. Thank you very much. It's like Careful when they're out picking blueberries, because blueberry pickers are the main cause, the main human cause of forest fires in this area. So that's why we showed up with Smokey and went along in this hike, just to have a presence to remind you to be careful when you're out blueberry picking.